This is Harriet. She's a very special woman who has been with this project longer than anyone else. The editor of the books and Robert Jordan's wife. Yes. And I have managed mostly to forget the day he died. It's the day he was born that I like to celebrate. So we brought you cupcakes to celebrate his birthday. Robert Jordan, I think, was really born to write. He taught himself to read at the age of four. He said it was Jules Verne that he looked at these books and thought, I'd like to write like that one day. And we fast forward now through high school. Midterms come along and so does flunking. And he walked down the road to his recruiting officer and, and went into the army. He was in Vietnam for two years and two months. He ended up in the hospital with a deep vein thrombosis, and he was reading a couple of books a day. And finally, the moment came when he threw one across the room, thinking, I can do better than that. He was brooding through the wheel of time, and it was gathering force. It began in his early thinking as the story of a veteran coming home from a war. Tom Althor, Rand Althor's father, and later it turned into the story of Rand and his companions. All we can do is the best we can with the life that's given to us. While the books were being written, we had some conversations about what was going on on the page. It was pretty remarkable that he would give me a passage where he had worked very hard and thought it was perfectly beautiful. And I would say, well, this can go. And the other way around, I would hold up something that he thought was just a bunch of syllables to get to the next thing. And I would say, that's really beautiful. It was remarkable, but we did have a wonderful working relationship. I trusted his work and he trusted mine. There was one place in the series where I said, honey, you've had a bunch of chapters here, which is just people talking. Can't something happen? And he said, yeah. And he took it back and, damn, if somebody doesn't get dead in those chapters. A lot of people don't understand how much in Tolkien's shadow a lot of fantasy was in the 80s. And everyone was like scrambling to figure out what he did and how he did it. And I would credit Wheel of Time as the first big turning point in fantasy saying, well, let's take what Tolkien did, meaning creating a new lore and history, rather than using the same story archetypes. Let's find new story archetypes. Let's find new types of characters. Let's find new types of world building. I'd say Wheel of Time is the first major mainstream fantasy epic that escaped Tolkien's shadow. And that was a big moment in fantasy for me. I think that paved the way for Game of Thrones quite a lot by saying, look, fantasy doesn't have to be this thing that it always has been before, and people were ready for Game of Thrones, in part because of trailblazers like Robert Jordan. I never got to meet Robert Jordan. I'd been reading his books since I was a young man. I fell in love with them. In fact, I often would study how he would approach scenes and character and voice while I was teaching myself how to write. I saw him once at a convention from a distance, and I was too chickened when I was a young man to go up and introduce myself. And so when he passed away in 2007, it was like a kick to the face to all of us in the fandom. And I was taken quite aback by this event happening. I realized I would never get to meet him, and I wished I'd gone up and spoken to him. Try everything. Right. Hello. Hello. I don't care about the show. I just want a good blooper reel. I want to learn science. science. <laughs> you guys are going to make me look like I'm in the show, right? You're going to put in the effects. Replace the green. I don't want to look like an asshole here. Sorry. <laughs>